Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Rockin' Dr. Rocks. Uh, today we're going to look at Google Earth Pro again, and we're going to plot some of the data that we downloaded here on, on the introductory Google Earth uh, video when we looked at uh, one of the watersheds in Rapid Creek. So uh, here I am uh, with Google Earth. This is Pro. This is the desktop version, not the online uh, version, but I believe you can probably do the same type of analysis. And I'm rolling the mouse forward into uh, the Black Hills where uh, where I am. And so uh, Rapid City is uh, right here. You can see the town. Uh, the uh, Ellsworth Air Force Base is uh, right here. Uh, the Rapid City Regional Airport is right here. And this is Rapid Creek uh, flowing out to the east uh, and then dumping into the Cheyenne River uh, out here a few miles east of the little town of Farmingdale. Okay, so uh, last time we downloaded a uh, watershed from Rapid City. So I'm zooming in on Rapid City where we can see that site. And, um, and if we zoom in, we can see Rapid Creek here flowing eastward through uh, the hogback or the gap uh, in the hogback. Uh, in Rapid City. And if you're familiar with the area, this is um, M Hill, so South Dakota Mines up there. Uh, if we go a little bit to the south, then uh, uh, Dinosaur uh, Park is right up here. And we looked at these here the other day. So USGS gauge station is uh, right here. You can see the little house. Uh, the measurement section is right down here somewhere before or under this tree. And we clicked a point there, delineated the watershed in uh, stream stats, one of the USGS programs, and and um, then we save that. So what I've done is I've downloaded um, the same type of thing, the watershed analysis, watershed analysis for four gauges on uh, Rapid Creek. So the one at uh, Farmingdale, right before it dumps into uh, the Cheyenne River, the Rapid Creek at Rapid City that we did last time together. And then there's a gauge station right below uh, Pactola uh, Dam, which is right in here. And then there's another gauge on the upside, right on the upstream side of the of Castle Creek, which is a, a tributary to Rapid Creek flowing into Deerfield Reservoir. And I believe if we zoom in on here, we'll even be able to see that gauge station as well. So a lot of people fish in here. This is the, the highway. And uh, sure enough, that little silver house right there, we can see that shadow uh, where the creek flows in this uh, culvert under the highway. Uh, that little house right there is the gauge station. It measures everything coming into uh, Deerfield Reservoir. <clears throat> so I have four watersheds and they're, they're hierarchical. They're stacked on each other. And so I've got them stored over here in my places. We'll drop that down. Uh, we'll go down into the Rapid Creek watersheds. And the first one um, that we did the other time together was Rapid Creek at Rapid City. So if I click on that, and all I've done is uh, from stream stats, I save these as um, uh, KMZ files, which are the file extensions that you need to bring into Google Earth. And then you just drag and drop and you click on it and there it is right there. So, you know, that hopefully looks a little familiar. And there's the pore point or the gate station. And the red line is the delineated watershed. So all of this area in blue contributing to this pore point right here. Okay, so that's the entirety of the watershed. And you can see it contains uh, Pactola Reservoir that's right here. And it contains um, uh, Deerfield Reservoir, which is up there. So uh, that's just familiarity, uh, what we did last time. So I'm going to turn that off again, and I'm going to start up in the highest uh, part of the watershed and come down. So here's, here is uh, uh, Deerfield Reservoir and the gauge on uh, Castle Creek. So if we turn that on right there, uh, here is the poor point so we can zoom in on this. And I've got these set to uh, like 60% transparency, and you could do uh, more. It's quite easy. You just... Um, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You just click on the shape file, which is what we um, downloaded. Let's see, go to properties, uh, color and style, and 70%. Okay, so let's see if I went to 80, that should make it more see-through. I didn't see any difference. 
anyway, you can change that uh, with, with that setting right there. But that's the gauge right there, and that is the um, area uh, that contributes to that gauge. So everything inside this uh, red line that I colored uh, red, again, you can set that in the properties, and then this kind of blue shade. Uh, if you just click on this, you just get the uh, some designated number, this the date and whatnot, when you downloaded the, uh, the data. Uh, we'll see that it can come up with other things depending on what you downloaded from um, stream stats. So we'll zoom back out of here so I can get my entire watershed in, which is going to be right about there. Okay, so if we, so all of this area right here contributes to this gauge. When we move down through Rapid Creek that flows down this way, uh, goes through these mountains, and it comes into uh, Pactola Reservoir, and there's a gauge right below Pactola right down here. So that is... Uh, Rapid Creek below Pactola, and we click on that, and there's the gauge. This is where I delineated from really close to the gauge, and again, everything um, inside of this uh, area, which includes Castle Creek, flows into uh, this station, and that's the that's the poor point. I colored that a little bit different. Okay, then the next one down is Rapid Creek, Rapid City, which is going to contain all of this area plus this intermediate area that's not highlighted yet. So we click on that, and there's all of that area. So again, this is the watershed that we delineated uh, previously. And then the last one on the system was Rapid Creek down at Farmingdale at that gauge. Uh, it was, okay, so it's probably about five or eight miles above where it dumps into the Cheyenne. Uh, but that's the last gauge uh, on the system, and so this would be the delineated uh, watershed. Now, if you recall from uh, stream stats, I want to have one more thing on here. Uh, the creek showed up in the deer, in the Castle Creek watershed, but if I turn the rest of it on, there's Rapid Creek. There's the flow path Rapid Creek from, from its origin uh, at Rhodes Fork all the way down through uh, the system uh, out to uh, east of Rapid City. Okay, so when we downloaded this first Rapid Creek at Rapid City station and delineated this watershed in the previous video, I went into the options in the stream stats and I had it save that file that had uh, drainage area, maximum elevation, minimum elevation, relief, uh, you know, percent um, pervious areas, percent impervious areas, amount of limestone, plateau, all of these different parameters that were there. And I saved that file, and when, it, when I brought that across uh, to this site right in here in these data folders that come across, uh, is that information from that uh, file. Okay, so if I go out to Farmingdale, the furthest one, and I just left click, I just get this kind of um, serial number again that has a date and whatnot on it when this was downloaded, and a gauge number probably in there somewhere. But if I go inside the watershed anywhere from this Rapid Creek at Rapid City Station upward, uh, all of these areas up here have that uh, uh, watershed data. So if I click on that, here it is. So the contributed drainage area from this point, uh, 413.06 square miles. That's everything inside uh, this red line contributing to this point uh, on Rapid Creek. Uh, the basin perimeter, 180.55 miles. If you were to walk around that thing, it might take a little while. Um, uh, you know, uh, max or the average elevation, 5,670 feet. Maximum elevation, 7,180 feet. That'd be somewhere, uh, probably up here uh, on this on this ridge. That is only 62 feet less than the highest point in the Black Hills, which is uh, Hardy Peak, uh, down underneath this area somewhere in here. And all that information is on here. So if you had that report in front of you or use these things to get enough that you knew what all these, um, some of them are acronyms, some of them like relief, you know, so 3,940 feet, that's the difference between max min elevation. Uh, the outlet level 3,241, that's right here. All that information shows up on here. So by loading these files, getting these files off of stream stats and then dumping them into uh, Google Earth, Pro, you have a tremendous amount of uh, information at your fingertips and you can do watershed analysis really quickly. Uh, one of the cool things in here is that when you go in and zoom in and uh, you, you know, rotate your image, uh, you're still seeing 3D. You're just uh, seeing your watershed colored on here. 
And so you can get an idea how the watershed boundary works. The program just goes through and picks the highest elevation point uh, that contributes water to that pore point that you'd click on when you delineated uh, the original uh, watershed. And that's how it works. So it's, it's a pretty slick system. Uh, you can get some really nice uh, products out of here. And again, if you, if you download all of those um, individual watershed parameters from stream stats, all of that's going to appear uh, in here as, as well. Okay, so the last thing I want to uh, show you is that uh, the USGS and, and the people who work, it's mainly USGS that does this, uh, they have delineated these uh, watersheds like this at different uh, levels. Uh, based on size. So there's watershed levels and it's a hierarchy of watersheds like you see here. So I've, I've shown four separate watersheds, but the small one fits inside of this one. Both of these two fit inside the third one. All three of these fit inside the fourth one. All of these would fit inside the Cheyenne River watershed. All of that would fit inside the Missouri River watershed that would fit inside the Mississippi and etc. And, and so although those are done and they have different uh, designations and they're in what's called the water boundary data set or the WBD and the HUC codes, the hydraulic unit code uh, is in this 10 just tells you a size of these uh, watersheds. So let's turn that on and what you can see is that my four delineated watersheds, Castle Creek uh, above uh, Deerfield, uh, above or above, uh, below Pactola, this is above Deerfield, below Pactola, uh, Rapid City and the Farmingdale, they all are contained inside of this um, watershed boundary data set at the HUC 10 level. And if I zoom out, this is for the northwest or the north central region of the United States. And again, these are data that can be downloaded readily from uh, USGS and other uh, websites and saved as a file and you can dump them in. Uh, you can trim them down, you can do whatever, but all these watersheds are different watersheds. So if you click on any one of them, uh, it's going to have the object uh, ID number, uh, the date that I uh, that this stuff was created. So this is 2012, uh, 548 square miles in the middle of Sulphur Creek. Okay, so I don't know where that's at, but if we go over to eastern South Dakota somewhere, you can kind of see a bet with the James River flowing down here. Click on this one right here, uh, Dry Lake number one. You know, Timber Creek, I've heard of that. You know, various other uh, watersheds. So closer to us, just north of uh, the Rapid Creek watershed, right here, this is Lower Box Elder Creek, and here is Upper Box Elder Creek. And uh, I've done a couple of videos out at uh, Nemo, Nemo area, and that's on the Box Elder Creek watershed. Go to the south of Rapid City, and there's Lower Spring Creek. Here's uh, Upper Spring Creek. Spring Draw, Cheyenne, so it goes into the Cheyenne, uh, Battle Creek. Okay, so these are the main watersheds that drain out of the Black Hills and they're, and they're delineated automatically uh, with this program. So it's a, it's a pretty handy thing to, to have. Okay, so this is Google Earth Pro again, looking at a uh, real simple watershed analysis of a nested hierarchical uh, set up of four different watersheds along Rapid Creek from the largest uh, down to uh, the smallest that's delineated um, automatically, uh, which would probably be a HUC 12. And then anything beyond that, if I wanted to divide this up into component watersheds, uh, there are methods to do that as, as well. And we could see the three or four different watersheds inside of this one that contribute to that point. And you can just keep dividing these down as small and small and small as you want. We may take a look at some of that at a later point. It gets a little tedious in delineating some of those uh, watersheds, but it's, it's kind of a cool exercise. I do have my students do it uh, at using computer program that we uh, just simply just click on points and select a starting point and then let the program run. It will delineate the sides of the watershed below that point to a certain pore point and various things like that. So it's kind of a fun exercise to do. So, all right, well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. Let me know if any if you have any comments or any questions or if you've done this or like to do this and, and are having a hard time getting started on it. And I'll see how I can help you out. Till next time, see ya.